Hey there friends, Nibs again. I'm out here in the garage doing a little bit of tinkering around tonight. and I got a bit of a victory report for you guys. Um, <clears throat> I've been uh, toying with this one. You saw this when I did a uh, mail call with this one uh, a week or so ago. And this is the Benjamin Franklin Model 137. And uh, this one was in pretty tough shape. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was... Uh, it was giving me some fits getting it working, uh, but I, I persisted and uh, I have overcome. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I did get a kit from Henry Ford and uh, the kit was really good, uh, but there was some problems with some of the pieces in here that I had to resolve uh, other than the, uh, the seal kit. So down inside of right around in here, there is a, a little valve body that's actually soldered in there so you can't get it out to work on it. And uh, <clears throat> there is an inlet valve that when you pump it moves back and lets the air go into the little air chamber and then there's an exhaust valve in the back. Well, the seat for the inlet valve was pitted, I guess, best way to describe it. and. Uh, Put everything together and I would pump it and as soon as I would unpump all the air would bleed right back out again and now it's uh, taking the air in so um, what I did I let you guys know kind of a little inside tip um, I found one of my punches and I wanted the flat end here it has a nice flat end on it took some jeweler's rouge and put it on the end of this punch down inside and I just kept spinning this back and forth back and forth it took me quite a bit of time to do but uh, it just buffed out that face of that that uh, seat in there and uh, it's holding there really good now so before uh, I could only get it would basically only shoot with one pumps worth of uh, <clears throat> one pump's worth of force which uh, is barely even enough to get the the BB would go or pellet would go across hit a piece of cardboard and bounce right back at me um, but now it's actually pumping up with some pretty good force uh, so I did do a little bit of chronograph work with it and I'll put up here so I did five pumps and at five pumps I was averaging right around 327 feet per second and then I bumped it up to eight pumps I'm not sure how many pumps maximum these are supposed to go up to I think I read a uh, maximum of eight with these old timers but uh, with eight I was almost I had a couple of over 400s and then one just under 400 so I'll put that up here as well but averaging around what was it 396 so it's a uh, shooting pretty good uh, the, the trigger is really nice on this gun it's like one pound what I got one pound 13 ounces uh, really really nice trigger and uh, I'm really really happy with this purchase now um, I was I was struggling with I've played with it for a couple of days out here now um, finally uh, I found a uh, guys I can't remember his channel name off the top of my head. I'll put a, the name of it down here. Um, and I'll also put a link to it down below. <clears throat> but uh, his it's Professor something. And he has a four-part series on how to rebuild these. And it's really, really good and really, really in-depth. And without that, I don't think I would have ever gotten it. But uh, he made a little tool with a dowel rod with a uh, piece of... Uh, fine sandpaper on it and I thought that might be a little bit too aggressive but I thought that burnishing uh, compound would be just the right uh, it seemed to work out pretty good but has worked out for him too but uh, let's go ahead and take a couple shots I got to shoot and see across the garage here and uh, let's see what we can do so this one is a, uh, a 137 oh you know what I thought I was shooting <laughs> so those those numbers I showed you were with uh, 8.18 grain. I thought I was shooting the Meister Coogans, but turns out I was shooting these QIS pellets, a much heavier pellet, so seven grain is gonna do a lot better, I would guess. But uh, 
let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do. I'll just shoot, uh, we'll just shoot five shots into a group and then uh, we'll wrap it up. It is a good shooting little gun though. Seems like every now and then the first pump, when you open it back up, you can hear the air bleeding back out again, but always on like the second, third, second pump, sometimes on the first pump you don't hear it. But uh, let me see if I can hear that it's bleeding off no it's not so for whatever reason every once in a while maybe it just needs to break in it was just a little like piece of white delrin that henry sent for the uh inlet valve so maybe that just needs to work in a little bit better But it certainly is a whole lot better than it was. <laughs> Ooh, that one went a little high. That's why, if you notice the first one there, I did. I I pumped it once, then I loaded it. That kind of gives that inlet valve a chance to seat a little bit before you start pumping it some more. But yeah, they're all in one little group except for one just a little bit low. Not a bad shooting gun, not a bad gun shooting gun at all. I still uh, still haven't started working on the uh, the 130, the early 130 because I've been tinkering with this one so much but uh, now that I've got this one done I'll start working on that 130 and that one will be the next one I get fixed up so anyway uh, this one will be going into the lineup as far as head-to-head -head challenges go a lot of fun plenty of power whoop <laughs> my uh, downrange illumination is needing recharged but there you go there is my Benjamin Franklin, model 137. Uh, but all I can tell, from all I can tell, this is a real early one. And they started making these in 1936, or 46, sorry. So it's probably uh, somewhere right around that vintage. But anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. You'll be notified when I do post up new videos. Until next time, have a great day.